will this scene affect the price of tomorrow's breakfast? What industry uses tremendous power but creates even more? Why does sandwich making fit a woman for an important factory job? Who makes the delightful miniature trains children love so much? Industry on Parade, a brand new look at our America, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Great White Way. But while thousands play through the night, possibly a million New Yorkers are working. Let's look in on one group of them, the men who bring the great metropolis its oranges and apricots, peaches, pears, plums, and pineapples. Let's visit the fruit auction that starts each midnight on a pier jutting out into the North River. The fruit comes in on railroad cars carried across the river by lighter. Here on the pier, they're unloaded and spread out for the inspection of buyers, not housewives, but representatives of various chain food stores, jobbers, wholesale and brokerage houses. They shop in about the same way the housewife does, but with a lot more wariness. And when the price is right, they buy. Not two dozen tomatoes or oranges, as she might, but two car lots. He doesn't know at this point what the price will be, but he checks samples from each car lot, decides the quality, and jots down what he thinks he should bid for it, if he wants it at all. And here's the auction, the Brown and Seccombe Fruit Auction, operating nightly almost exactly as it's been going on since the company was founded in 1798. This is the way they buy and sell. Here, supply and demand meet head on, night in and night out. Free interplay between supply and demand brings the fairest possible price for the ultimate consumer. The auctioneers are amazing. They must know everybody in the room, of course, but that's not too difficult since most of the buyers have been here every night for many years. What is difficult is remembering in the course of rapid fire bidding each buyer's credit rating and the amount of goods that he has bought, not only tonight, but for the past week or two. Some make bids by wild waving. Others barely lift an eyebrow. The auctioneer sees them all. And when a sale is made, everyone notes the price for guidance in subsequent bidding. As the hours move along, one can tell here what grapes, let's say, will be selling for when the stores open in the morning. They keep the office informed of what they've bought, what others have bought, what prices are being paid. Everything is rush, rush, rush for they're dealing with perishable foods that can lose half their value unless speeded to the consumer at the peak of freshness. While the bidding is still going on upstairs, and it will continue on until 10 or 11 in the morning, the produce already purchased is being loaded aboard trucks to be sped to outlets, some of which are many miles away. This isn't the 21, where movie stars mingle with cafe society, but it's almost a club, and I guess you'll have to call it a nightclub. But it's one that millions of residents of a great crowded city can thank for helping to bring them luscious fruits from vineyards and orchards all over the world. It takes teamwork to build a bigger and better America. By getting the most out of their tools and machines, American employees help keep quality up and prices down. Investors risk their savings in machines and tools that help turn out mass-produced goods at prices we can afford. Management brings men, money, and machines together to keep us the most productive nation in the world. And consumers, by demanding more and better products for their money, keep industry on its toes. With all four of these groups working together, we'll keep moving ahead and become even stronger and more prosperous in the future. A Los Angeles factory, like any other, it uses great quantities of power. Whether that power comes from water, coal, petroleum, even atomic energy, it cannot be utilized without the product manufactured in plants like this. For here at Western Gear Works, they make the notched wheels that transmit motion from place to place. 
and sometimes transform it from one kind of motion into another, from rotary motion to back and forth motion, to cite just one example. Or, here's a spiral gear being formed. It will make possible changes in the direction of motion, permitting power to be sent around a corner, as it were. Ancient civilizations employed gears of a sort by which animal power was used to pump water and mill grain. They weren't made, though, with anything approaching the precision of these. When you think of a modern automobile with its hundreds of gears spinning at great speed and without a sound, you get an idea of just how precisely gears are now made. As gears grow more complex, so does the job of turning them out. Spiral grooves, beveled edges, and tolerances measured in thousands or even ten thousands of an inch. And you even have to be careful in machining a piece, not to disturb the internal structure of the metal. Rearrangement of the molecules can result in weakness. To check on that sort of thing, they have a wide array of testing equipment that applies magnetism, among other things, to reveal the character of the metal, just as an X-ray reveals the structure of the human body. As a matter of fact, they use X-ray on the metal, too. And here we see the other end of the scale, one of the smallest gears produced in the plant. So minute, it has to be examined in a microscope, but it may perform jobs as big as the 12-footers made in this same plant. There have to be all sizes to keep the wheels of industry and transportation turning. And regardless of the size, they've got to have greater accuracy, strength, and endurance than ever before. Consider the American housewife performing her daily routine. She knits and darns and sews. She cooks and bakes and makes sandwiches. For the most part, she does not regard her chores as being the sort that require great dexterity or skill, just patience and versatility, and a willingness to put in long hours. No glamour here, she says to herself. Anyone can iron. And who doesn't know how to can? Well, the fact is that not everybody does know how to handle the tools that the housewife uses every day. Ever watch a man try to manipulate a fingernail brush? Industrialists have long recognized that there are certain jobs which women do better than men. It's the kind of work, let's face it, that the good woman does around the house every day. To show you what we mean, here's the United Control Corporation of Seattle manufacturers of electronic aircraft equipment. Not much need for brute strength, but plenty of need for attention to minute details. And whom do we find knitting intricate skeins of wire? That's right, the same lady we saw at home knitting a sweater. This is de-icing equipment, a sort of sweater for a jet bomber. And here's our sandwich maker, making a double-decker sandwich of electronic components that will perform a variety of control functions in today's very complex aircraft. The gal at the ironing board? Here she is ironing on the decals that identify various pieces of equipment, applying in a very vital way a skill which, at home, she didn't consider a skill at all. Canning peaches, or canning a piece of equipment that must be protected from the elements, it boils down to one and the same thing. Just as painting fingernails and touching up solder connections are also pretty much alike. These days, industry needs as many women folk as the home can spare. And those housewives who take the plunge find there isn't such an upset in their lives as they expected. Sealing preserves with wax and sealing an electrical switch with plastic Little difference, except that the latter pays better. A couple of newcomers to industry get a new slant on some feminine know-how as old as the fair sex itself, but today more important than ever before. Millions of industrial employees are now protected by company health and medical programs. Industrial management recognizes that maintaining a high level of employee health is a vital and integral part of sound personnel practices and good human relations. 
A marked increase has taken place during the past decade, both in the number of health care programs and the scope of medical services made available to employees. Employers believe that the protection of employees against any adverse or harmful job-connected conditions remains a basic responsibility. Hey kids, how'd you like to work in a place like this? Not an amusement park, it's a factory. The Rensselaer, Indiana plant of Miniature Train Corporation, where they turn out pint-sized models of some of the most famous railroad trains in the country. Here they assemble the trucks, two of which support every car. The finishing touches are put on one of the wheels. Looks awful small, but you'd be amazed at the load it'll take. Here's one of the company's proudest achievements, a miniature air brake that works just as effectively as those used on standard gauge railroads and helps bring to amusement parks, zoos and the like, not only the realism of regular railroading, but its safety as well. The air brakes are installed one to each wheel. Miniature trains are generally thought to be chiefly for children, but actually they attract considerable adult attention. According to the company's figures, almost as many grown-ups as children ride these things. For the miniatures are used not only as amusements, but in places like shopping centers to carry people to and from parking lots. The trains are all scaled models of the real thing, and major railroads are more than anxious to have the miniatures identified with one of their crack trains. They consider it excellent advertising. And to protect the good name of their road, they sometimes even assume responsibility for maintaining rolling stock and roadbed. Making the rails is a lot simpler than with full-size tracks, but pretty much the same standards are maintained, for after all, these tracks will carry passengers too, and comfort and safety are everything. All over the country, at fairs, carnivals, and kiddie parks, the newest attraction is one of the oldest, riding the trains. In many cities, the miniature railroad right-of-way stretches out for a mile, a mile and a half, and more. If the expansion program keeps up, it won't be long before the miniatures are operating interstate. <laughs>